Hello and a very warm welcome to our brand new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on what's happening in the field of science and technology in our country and how these developments are changing our life. First, let's take a look at the headlines. National Green Tribunal organizes global environment meet. Experts explore ways to protect the environment. Standard operating procedures, a big step in tiger conservation. Water and sustainable development, special story celebrating World Water Day. In our segment in focus, we'll discuss about the recently observed changes in the weather pattern, its causes and consequences. And in science you can use, indigenous innovation offers a ray of hope to victims of above knee amputations. And let's now get you all the news in detail. As population increases and poverty grows, humans turn towards nature to fulfill their needs. And more the resources are drained, poorer a nation becomes. On top of that, our development activities that disregard environmental factors has resulted in massive environment degradation, a crucial challenge faced by the world today. In order to deliberate on the causes and consequences of environment degradation and to develop strategies to combat the same, the National Green Tribunal recently organized the Global Environment Meet in the national capital. Nature has enough to satisfy everyone's need. But what happens when the need increases persistently with increasing population and poverty? India, one of the industrialized countries of the world, still remains home to one-fourth of the world's poor and our choices with regard to environment are largely governed by the needs of our poor population. Economic growth and environmental degradation share a dichotomous relationship as poverty is both a cause and effect of environmental degradation in the words of Honorable Vice President of India, Sri Hamid Ansari. The Vice President was inaugurating the Global Environment Meet in New Delhi on 14th March. The key environmental challenge that a developing country such as India faces relate to the nexus of environmental degradation with poverty in its many dimensions and economic growth. It is thus important to understand the dichotomous relationship between economic growth and environmental degradation. The two-day global environment meet was organized by the National Green Tribunal to discuss the various aspects of environmental degradation, the common challenge faced by all the countries irrespective of the development status. Environmentalists, scientists, lawyers, experts from about 30 countries participated in the event. The conference was a common platform to deliberate over global warming, disaster management, municipal solid waste management, among other issues. The discussions also focused on bridging the economic divide as poverty drives more and more people to resort to environment to meet their demands. Also seen at the conference were India's Environment Minister Prakash Javrekar, Chief Justice H.L. Dattu and Attorney General Mukul Rohatgi. Tigers are the largest cat species and India is home to 60% of the total world tiger population. Now with such a large population to maintain, the incidences of poaching, tigers venturing into human settlements, instances of orphan tiger cubs etc are not unusual. But few of us know that there exists a set of standard operating procedures when it comes to handling the tigers. Let's tell you all about that in this report. Scientifically known as the Panthera tigris, the Royal Bengal tiger belongs to the largest animals within the cat species. The Bengal tiger forms the most numerous tiger subspecies, making India home to 60% of the total global tiger population. 
According to the third round of country level tiger assessment of 2014, the total population of tigers in India is 2,226. With such a huge population to maintain, the problems faced by the wildlife department are many. From poaching to minimizing human-animal conflict and encroachment and taking care of orphan tiger cubs, the wildlife department regularly handles issues pertaining to maintenance and management of tiger population. In order to maintain a systematic approach to preserve this wild species, Government of India has in place a set of standard operating procedures for handling tigers. These procedures, known as SOPs in short, prescribe a uniform set of rules, regulations and code of conduct for the management of tiger population. In the field, a lot of problems are faced by the different field directors and uh, every field director, you know, depending on the situation, they tend to do the job as per uh, situation at that point of time. So therefore, it, it is uh, not uniform. You know, to all the tiger reserves, so to say. So therefore, we have made a standard of uh, operation so that uh, all the tiger reserves the uniformly follow the same process. The SOPs were released by Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Sri Prakash Javrekar, at the recently organized meeting of Chief Wildlife Wardens of Tiger Rain States and Field Directors of Tiger Reserves. This includes special directions related to active management towards rehabilitation of tigers, orphan tiger cubs and tiger depredation on livestock. These SOPs provide the basic minimum steps which are required to be taken at the field level for dealing with incidents of rehabilitation of tigers, orphan tiger cubs or tigers straying in human dominated landscapes. If any tiger reserves have the overpopulation beyond the cap, you know, carrying capacity, then in that case, scientifically, we need to shift to somewhere else. And we'll be shifting to the tiger reserves where the capability is there, capacity is there, potential is there, but the tiger number is less. So that is how, then, um, in between, a lot of process you have to follow, you know, how to identify the tigers, identify the area, then security, all those aspects has to be seen. That is how you know, in the SOP, details are given. These soaps are designed to ensure that straying tigers are handled in the most appropriate manner to avoid casualty or injury to human beings, tigers, cattle and property. The soaps apply to all forest field formations, including tiger reserves, besides other areas where such incidents occur. In order to minimize the incidence of tiger poaching, the government is also introducing e-surveillance through drones and voluntary relocation programs. Twenty second of March is celebrated as the World Water Day internationally. Now, in the present scenario, it is becoming more and more important to work towards water conservation. From survival to socio-economic progress, water is at the core of sustainable development. Celebrating the nexus of water and sustainable development is this year's World Water Day theme. Take a look at this report. Water, the crucial component that made life possible on Earth. While we may survive for weeks without food, we shall not last even days without water. Clean and safe water is an absolute necessity for humans and other life forms. But our thoughtless developmental activities have resulted in massive degradation of water resources worldwide. The once most abundant and freely available resource is now becoming a rare commodity. And the question arises, Will the Third World War be fought over water? Foreseeing the calamities that may result from depleting water resources and to spread awareness regarding the need to conserving water, United Nations General Assembly declared 22nd March as World Day of Water in 1993. Since then, March 22nd every year is celebrated as World Water Day. While last year, the World Water Day was centered on the theme Water and Energy. 
The World Water Day of 2015 is themed Water and Sustainable Development. This year, World Water Day is all about water links to diverse areas we need to consider in order to create the sustainable future we want. This is in view of the fact that water and all other major sectors are intricately interconnected and a delicate equilibrium needs to be maintained. The changing industrial scenario and the increasing demands of the steadily growing global population in the past years have placed tremendous stress on water resources, posing water security threats worldwide. It is estimated that 780 million people lack access to safe drinking water and in the coming years, with increasing population and developmental activities, the demand of water is only going to increase multifold. This year's World Water Day hence focuses on the adoption of Nexus strategies to meet the increasing global demands without compromising sustainability. Well, time now for a very short break here. We'll be right back. Keep watching Science Monitor. Welcome back. You're watching Science Monitor. Let's now take a look at some important activities surrounding science and technology happening in India and abroad. Here is the Science Express. Dr. Jitendra Singh, in reply to a Rajya Sabha question, has recently informed that a third launch pad has been proposed by the Indian Space Research Organization. The proposed launch pad is intended to support increased launch frequency, launching requirements of future advanced launch vehicles, and also serve as a redundant launch pad for the GHLV M3 class of vehicles. The possible site for the third launch pad has been identified as Sri Harikota, while further work on the design of the launch pad will soon be taken up. With the objective of spreading awareness regarding clean drinking water and proper sanitation, the centre recently conducted a week-long Rural Drinking Water and Sanitation Awareness Week. The event was launched at village Kankrola Bhanglora of Gurgaon district in Haryana and concluded on the World Water Day at Kohima, Nagaland. The campaign focused on awareness programs on construction and use of household toilets, clean villages, safe handling and use of drinking water, awareness of quality of drinking water, water conservation, community managed water supply systems, etc. On this occasion, Swachhata Rats and mobile water quality testing vans were also dispatched to various parts of the districts to create awareness among the rural masses. In an exciting new discovery, researchers have unearthed fossil remains of a human jaw, which they believe predates the oldest fossils known. The fossil discovered from the Lidi research area in Ethiopia is estimated to be 28 million years old and is assumed to belong to some of the first human races at the beginning of evolution. Scientists believe that estimating the exact age of the fossilized jaw will provide a clue as to why and when humans abandoned the habitats on trees and started living on the Earth. Moving away into space, NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has recently found strong evidence of a massive saltwater ocean in Jupiter's largest moon, Ganymede. According to the scientists, the ocean is 100 kilometers thick, 10 times deeper than Earth's oceans, and is buried under a 150 kilometer icy crust. Scientists believe that the discovery marks a significant milestone as it opens up further exciting possibilities for life beyond Earth. The finding has been published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Space Physics. The Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council on the 19th of March celebrated its third Foundation Day in New Delhi. The Foundation Day was themed Accelerating Innovations, India, the next biotech global hub. A two-day discussion on various issues relating to development of biotechnology in the country was also organized during the event. The event was inaugurated by the Minister of State for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, Sri Y.S. Chaudhary, 
and attended by over 250 scientists, entrepreneurs, industry experts, and policy makers. The Foundation Day also included a plenary talk on Make in India, a perspective on the biotech sector, the opportunities, the enablers, and the challenges by the Chairman and Managing Director of Biocon, Dr. Kiran Mazumdar Shaw. In an interesting celestial event, the world on March 20th witnessed three rare astronomical phenomena together. On 20th March, as the Earth's axis was perpendicular to the Sun's rays, many parts of the world witnessed solar eclipse while others saw a supermoon. The day also marked the spring equinox, when the day and night were of equal duration. The equinox will happen at the same time as a solar eclipse now in 2053 and 2072. Snowfall in Kashmir, heavy rains in Delhi and a scorching heat wave in Kerala. Weather has played an unusual gimmick this March in several states of India. While the common man is baffled at the unusual and sudden change in weather and experts seek the answers, climate change now looks like a harsh reality. Join the Science Monitor team as we explore the reasons behind climate change and its irreversible consequences in our segment In Focus. Come March and Northern India prepares to welcome the onset of spring. But this year has been different. While the country waited the subsiding of harsh winters, snowfall continued in the states like Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. And in states like Punjab, Haryana and Delhi, it rained as if it was the season of monsoon. These untimely rains have baffled even the climate experts. According to them, this is the first time in 15 years that such an unusual weather pattern has occurred. What is even more surprising and also difficult to explain is the reason behind this untimely downpour, which is not due to an unusual low pressure formation. Such unusual weather patterns are observed rarely in plains once in two decades and snowfall in Indian mountain states during March is once in a century occurrence. Various states in the country have also registered a 4 to 6 degree fall in maximum temperature. This is along with the emergence of many new infections including swine flu that has already claimed 1200 lives. Are we finally witnessing the adverse and visible effects of climate change? Experts have every reason to fear so. Such dramatic changes in the climate are becoming increasingly visible across the globe. Unexpected floods and severe droughts have become a common phenomenon. Climate change is a huge concern worldwide with serious scientific, social and economic dimensions. The largest contributors to this phenomenon are human activities like large-scale cutting of trees and excess use of fossil fuels that emit greenhouse gases. Climate change is often manifested as change in weather patterns like untimely rains with heavy downpours, prolonged and harsh summers accompanied by heat waves, etc. Research suggests that global surface temperatures have risen by about 0.6 degrees Celsius since 1900 and there is a measurable increase in the carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide levels in the atmosphere due to human activities since 1750. While the modern weather prediction techniques help in the prediction and management of such unexpected occurrences to a certain extent, the damages to crop and life are not always reversible. The effects of change in climate also impact natural ecosystems like Sundarbans, a major portion of which is already underwater due to the rising sea levels. Climate change poses great risks to human and animal health, global food security and economic development. It results in floods and droughts adversely affecting the infrastructure including agriculture. Reduced water supplies, increased wildfires, 
disease outbreaks, reduced agricultural yields, flooding and erosion in coastal areas and rising sea levels due to melting of glaciers are some of the serious consequences of climate change. According to climate experts, if left unchecked, the changing climate will be faster in the coming decades, wrecking more havoc in the future. Under such circumstances, it is the urgent need of the hour that citizens of the world come together and adopt effective measures diligently to mitigate the harmful and serious effects of the threat called climate change. What are the contributions of science to this week's history? Let's learn in our next segment, History of Science. Professor Govind Swaroop, the renowned radio astronomer, was born in Thakurdwara, Uttar Pradesh on 23rd March 1929. A Padma Shri awardee and the former director of the National Center of Radio Astrophysics of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, he is one of the pioneers of radio astronomy. Professor Govind Swaroop is the key brain behind the concept, design and installation of the UT Radio Telescope and the giant Metrowave Radio Telescope near Pune. The World Meteorological Organization, the specialized body of UNO, was established on 23rd March 1950. Since then, 23rd March is celebrated every year as World Meteorological Day. WMO is an intergovernmental organization with a membership of 191 member states and territories and works in the areas of meteorology, operational hydrology and related geophysical sciences. WMO is known for the creation of the famous Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in collaboration with the United Nations Environment Programme. Norman Ernest Borlaug, the famous biologist, was born in Iowa, United States on 25th March 1914. Known as the father of the Green Revolution, Norman Ernest Borlaug is renowned for the development of semi-dwarf, high-yield, disease-resistant wheat varieties. He also introduced modern agricultural production techniques to Mexico, Pakistan and India which helped increase the agricultural yield. He was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1970 for his outstanding contributions to the field of agriculture and ensuring food security. German physicist Wilhelm Konrad Röntgen was born in Lennep, Prussia on 27th March 1845. Röntgen is known for his work on cathode rays that led to the discovery of the X-rays, which in turn revolutionized the field of physics and medical diagnosis. Röntgen was awarded the first Nobel Prize for Physics in 1901. Well, on to our next segment, Science You Can Use. Today, we'll acquaint you with an innovation that aims to make life easier for those who undergo above-knee amputation. Yes, the first indigenous four-bar prosthetic limb designed by a student of IIT Madras offers a new ray of hope to patients as it overcomes the limitations of conventional prosthetic legs. Take a look. Diabetes, vascular disease or road accidents. Anything could be a cause of transfemoral or above knee amputation. And the problems faced by those who undergo the surgery are many. Although prosthetic limbs offer a ray of hope, Yet, the primitive nut and bolt design forbids stable standing and makes walking awkward, especially on the uneven terrain. So this is a prosthetic knee joint for above knee amputees. So th those guys who have lost the knee, uh, the knee joint al along with this limb. So these guys right now in India, they have a wooden kind of joint wherein there is a top part and a bottom part connected by a revolute joint, a nut bolt arrangement which forms the knee. So with that knee, he's not a, he won't be able to stand stable unless he uses hip, hip strength or any sort of locking mechanism in his knee joint to lock the mechanism while standing to avoid flexion. 
and now the patients have something to look forth to in the form of the indigenous polycentric or four bar knee developed by Mr. Anand T.S., a student of IIT Madras. In India, we don't have such a four bar knee joint. It's called a four bar knee joint because we have four revolute joints. So in India, we don't have a successful uh, four bar. They have tried, but it's not that uh, it's not that stable because of the uneven terrain we have in India. Abroad, if you see, we have four bars, but again, those are pretty expensive, not affordable. It will be above one lakh and all. And they are not suited to the uneven terrain conditions that we have here in India. They, they have a lot of pavements and level surfaces. So, and another thing that we have done is, we have worked on the four bar design. So we, we have tried to um, connect what four bar is better we, uh, by changing the length, length and all those things. How can we um, customize it to be user-friendly user in India? The four bar knee mimics the human knee joint and uses multiple axes of rotation. This provides the user with stability while standing along with flexible control over the knee and this leads to effortless and normal walking. Designed using high strength aluminium and stainless steel, this prosthetic knee prevents the excessive strain on the hip faced by users of prosthetic limbs. The 4-bar knee for which IIT Madras has filed a patent was recently demonstrated at the National Innovation Foundation exhibition. Science Monitor team along with the audience hope that Anand's 4-bar knee which is already being tested in various centres across the country shall be launched soon as a relief to the above knee amputees of the country. Well, that's all we have for you in this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us whether you liked our program. You can send your feedback and suggestions on the following email ID, news at the rate vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write to us at vigyanprasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi, 110016. That's all in today's episode. We'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, stay tuned and think scientific.